I grabbed some china plates. I smashed the plates on a rock. I mixed ready mix concrete with water. Put the first layer of concrete inside. Tamper it down. I placed the broken china on top. I wiped with the sponge, removed the cardboard around the outside, and placed it in the garden. We've got our Harlequin stencil. We're going to dip straight in, just making sure we don't have too much paint anywhere. See how perfect it comes up. Hook up your stencil to your existing pattern. Water lily stencil. All of our hot pink done to be in this beautiful greenish gray color with some of the filigree here. Lift up. Isn't this stepping stone beautiful? We're going to mix up cement as per instructions. The cement is ready to come out. It came out so easily. Let's get started painting. The next color will be red. I'm trying to put the paint inside the bubbles. I'm making a watermelon. And then I'm going to make a couple of more other fruits. Take a paper towel and spray it with cooking spray and rub it around your container or molds. Add pigment into your water and mix it. Let the powder fully dissolve. Take your powdered cement, slowly add water into your powder mixture. You want the consistency to be pancake batter-like. Scoop some into your mold and spread it around with your hand. Tap your container a few times, take a doily and center it. Pull the sides of your mold slowly to release the stepping stone. Flip the container upside down, it will slowly release. Pull up on one end and slowly start peeling it up. Bring it outside and line them up. I came across these adorable plastic garden fences. I took some wire cutters and I cut apart the plastic and I'm going to begin mixing up some plaster of Paris. I mix it very well, spreading some cooking oil on a piece of paper towel and rubbing it all on the inside of the plate. Then I poured in my plaster of Paris and then I picked up the pie plate and shook it around and next I took my butterfly pieces and I placed them in the middle of the plaster of Paris mixture. I continued doing this with different um, pieces of the plastic fence, write out the word welcome in the plaster of Paris on one of them. Since the cooking oil was in there, they slid out perfectly and I actually just filled in the lines. I took them out to my garden. I'm gonna lightly draw in a pattern on the tree charger. I'm gonna spray down the top of the tree chargers, put some little blobs right there, and I'm gonna paint the wood. I'm gonna do a red stripe on the outside. Now I'm just gonna go back over with some blue and just blend it just to kind of outline the stones just like this pour it over the surface make sure you even it out craft resin is dry and i am so excited with how they've turned out i dumped the cement powder in and then it was time to pour in the water i stirred for about five minutes ensuring that i got all the clumps you're going to want your mixture to be as smooth as possible and now it's time to grab your mold you can use anything like a pizza baking dish that is disposable next you're going to want to pick up your mold and slowly start tilting it from side to side to smooth the top as much as possible dry for a little while i was able to add my mosaic tiles i waited about 36 hours before removing from the mold came out super easily even easier than I expected to paint the backside take the glow in the dark paint I use two coats I think it looks so great I love the colors it all goes so well together and here's a nighttime view of the other side of the tile with the glow in the dark paint which I think turned out really cool okay so first stage of this is for me to get this paint this fence completely painted I have got these melamine plastic plates I just picked up at the dollar store I've also got a couple of these larger silver colored plates that's isopropyl alcohol I've just cleaned the plate with that. I'm going to take a little bit out of alcohol here. I'm just going to squirt it onto the plate. And then I've got these really lovely, I'm just going to drop a little bit on here. I'm just going to move this around a bit to start with. Alcohol on there. There we go. Here we go. A little bit more of that. You can use a hairdryer or a heat gun. I'm just going to go around and around in circles and just see if we can get some nice kind of edges. Okay, now because this is alcohol ink, I'm actually going to seal it with this Kmar varnish. The second version that I'm going to do on these little plates is I'm actually going to use these stick and style stencils. This I've already coated with a second coat of paint. Okay, let's take this stencil off and see how it looks. Our third technique that we're going to create on these plates is going to be, we're going to go full Jackson Pollock. Next up, we're going to use this silver bullet. Exactly the same. We can do that on one of our smaller plates. So let's see what it looks like now that I've hung them all up. 
All you need is a stack of wood paint stirrers. It's all laid out. I'm going to go ahead and paint them a beautiful yellow color. Now that my paint sticks are all ready, it's time to start putting them together to add some wood glue in between the joints. I love this new piece of beehive art. I can't wait to see what it looks like when the plants start growing. So I've come back from the thrift store with a few items and now I'm going to clean them up. For this first one, I'm gonna be using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. And I've got a stencil brush here. Dip it into the paint, but then I'm gonna offload a little bit of it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gonna continue around. I'm gonna let them dry completely before the next step with these. For this next one, we're going to be using Pledge Floor Care Cleaner. Pour some of the Pledge Floor Cleaner into the glass base. Whirl the glass carefully so that it's all coated. I'm just gonna use some snowy glitter and I'm gonna dump a healthy amount in here. Now we start swirling all the way around. And I let it dry completely. Next, I'm gonna use some green glitter. Same process. And I'm gonna be using Folk Art enamel paint in the color Wicker White. For this last one, I'm gonna leave them plain. So we're gonna start with the cup and I'm gonna to choose to have it go up and upside down. One is super glue and put it on the edge all the way around. You place it on top. So I'm gonna let this one dry and we'll start adhering the other ones. I hope this inspires you to take some thrift store items and flip them for your home and yard. While I was at a flea market, I spied these license plates and knew I could do something with them. I wanted to make a flower, so I laid the license plate on a piece of white paper and cut it to size. Then I folded the paper in half and cut out half of a petal for my pattern. Pattern and laid it on the back of the license plate and traced around it with a Sharpie. Using a tin snip, I cut it out. I turned up the edges with a plier. I also used a small paint can and rolled the plate along the can's edge to bend it. The center of the flower, I cut a plate in half and then I cut out a circle. I made cuts into the center of the circle and bent the cuts upward. I drilled a hole in the center of the center piece and then drilled holes in the ends of each of the petals. I placed a bolt through each of the holes and then using an electrical box cover, I drilled a hole in the center of that and one hole on each side of the center hole. I placed the bolt through the center hole and secured everything together with a nut. I threaded a cable tie through the two side holes in the box cover and then placed the plant stake around the bolt and secured it with the cable tie. I do love how it turned out and I was proud of myself for figuring out how to attach the pieces together without using a soldering tool. I found this piece of dryer venting at the reuse store. I'm gonna start by slicing it down the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a section. With this end cut off, I wanna flatten it out. I wanna turn them into wings. I'm gonna make two different sizes. I'm gonna lightly brush on some blue paint to the ends, some sage green to the middles, and then some cream paint to the tips. I'm gonna do both sides of the spindle I'm going to add some sage green. I'm going to cover the entire spindle now with this pearl glaze. I'm just going to use some small nails and a hammer to hold all four wings in place. The final thing I need to do is attach a small head. I love how fun this giant dragonfly is. It adds such a colorful touch to the fence and was so easy to make. 